What's poppin' y'all? It's Flacco with Go Power Sports. We're here today at the Go Power Sports headquarters. Let's check out this little rascal, Aiden. What up, y'all? Kinda got the understanding that a lot of y'all got the 79cc engine and you kinda want a little bit more ump, but we got what you need. It's our new 98cc engine. As far as bolting them to your bike, it's gonna bolt up exactly like the 79cc. You even use some of the same parts. Back to the install video. Let's get it. In my opinion, these are really, really dope kits. Reason being, number one, the classic vintage look. If you want to make it old school like the Doodle Bug or the classic vintage mini bike you grew up with, this is the one for you. Number two, they're great for experience or beginners. Really, really versatile kit. Number three, the customization. There's tons of things you can do to customize this bike and make it yours, and we're gonna show you how today. Okay, y'all. First and foremost, our little rascal kit comes with two available engine options. Our 80cc for our beginner riders, and our 212cc for our more experienced riders. It also comes with all the necessary hardware to assemble your bike, as far as brakes and seat as well. A eight inch aluminum spun gas tank, and last but not least, our wheels. Well, I say we're ready to jump into one of these. We'll start by just the basic installation of our 80 and our 212 kit. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and put our custom spin on the 212 kit. Let's get it. So let's get started by going through what comes in our hardware box. Okay, first you'll see, this kit particularly comes with the black and white seat, but you will have other color options to choose from. Header pipe, rear brake caliper and handle, gas tank hardware, pink kit, air filter, necessary amount of fuel line, all the necessary hardware you'll need to assemble the bike, twist grip and throttle, throttle cable, air filter adapter, chain roller, a number 425 chain, I believe it's five feet. Sprocket adapter, rear brake disc, little rascal plate, a number 54-2 rear sprocket, foot peg and kickstand, all the necessary axles and pins, mini bike clutch, Go Power Sports chain guard. Last but not least, Little Rascal stickers. For this project, we're gonna be using a Phillips screwdriver, 13 millimeter standard size socket, and a three quarter inch ratchet, a 13 millimeter deep socket, eight millimeter socket, 13 millimeter box wrench, two 10 millimeter box wrenches, good pair of needle nose pliers, pair of wire cutters, four millimeter Allen, and to speed things up, I like to use the impact, preferably with the 3 8 drive. I'm gonna start by assembling the Little Rascal front forks first. You're gonna need to press in the bushings for your fork kingpin. To install your bushing, slide it onto your axle, your front fork bolt. Slide it down into the shaft of the bike. And you use a hammer. Tap it in. Once the bushing has been started, you remove the bolt and continue to tap the bushing until it says flush with the bolt. To install the bottom bushing, just repeat. Once both bushings are installed, take your front forks, slide on. You'll be using a, your front fork bolt and one washer to start. Before tapping your bolt all the way through, it's good to double check and make sure everything is lined up. Once ensured that everything is lined up, go ahead and proceed to tap your bolt through, but don't force it. After your bolt's tapped all the way through and sitting flush, you'll be installing one washer 
and one locking nut underneath. To tighten down our little rascal front forks, I'm gonna be using a three quarter inch ratchet and a three quarter inch box wrench. After tightening, check your bars and make sure they're not over tight. You still want to play in them. At least to be able to turn your bars. Once our little rascal handlebars are installed, we can proceed by installing our front wheels. Inside your axle bag, you'll find located your little rascal front wheel axle. To start installing your front wheel, you start by taking your front axle bolt, partially placing it through your front forks. Grab your front wheel, ensure that your tread is in the right direction. Roll your wheel between your forks and slide your first spacer onto the axle bolt. Once the first spacer is on the axle bolt, Proceed by sliding the spacer through your front wheel. Next, grab your second spacer, place it onto your axle bolt, slide it all the way through until it comes out your other fork. Once your bolt is partially out of your fork, Install your three quarter inch nylon lock washer. And to tighten your lock bolt, you're gonna use a three quarter inch ratchet and a three quarter inch wrench to hold the bolt. It's okay to have some space in between your spaces and your forks while tightening. You should see that space close slowly but surely. Once the bolt is tightened, straighten your wheel and check it for free spin and any wobbles. Looking good. All right, so next, we're gonna get our rear little rascal wheel assembled. To start by doing that, we're gonna take our brake spacer and our brake disc and line up the holes. Include it. And label, you'll see sprocket and roller caliper bolts. And just for now, we're gonna go finger tight only. Once all bolts are threaded, started, I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter impact to drive them the rest of the way. Remember, when tightening bolts, I always go in a cross pattern. Next, we'll install our sprocket onto our sprocket adapter. You take, line up the holes, and your sprocket adapter will come with its own 10 millimeter bolts. It should be six included. Once again, just finger tight to start. So to tighten down your sprocket bolts onto your sprocket adapter, I'm gonna use a 11 millimeter impact. Remember to always tighten in a cross pattern. When installing your sprocket and your sprocket adapter on the rear wheel, place your GPS logo on the outside of the wheel. You'll go back to your 10 millimeter bolts. You'll be using a 10 millimeter impact to tighten it. When the wheel is completely assembled, we'll go ahead and proceed to installing it on our little rascal. Now that we got it fully assembled, to do that, we're gonna start by inserting our rear axle into the frame partially. Go ahead and roll your rear wheel in. Take one of your rear wheel spacers or axle spacers. Place it onto the axle partially. Line it up with your rear wheel. You may have to kind of wiggle it in order to line up the uh, spacer on the inside of the wheel. Take your second axle spacer, place in between the frame and the rear wheel. You may kind of have to wiggle it. It should be a somewhat of a snug fit. You should get the two lined up. 
proceed by pressing your axle through. Once your axle placed through, take your 11 16th lock nut. Finger tight. To tighten this bolt, I'm gonna be using a 9 16th ratchet on the bolt head side. For the nut side, I'll be using an 11 16th box wrench. Just as we did when we installed our front wheel, once we get our rear wheel installed, we're gonna check for a good free spin. Wobbles within your sprocket, wobbles within your rear wheel, and also wobbles within your brake. All right, y'all. So one thing about the, what makes the little rascal a little rascal is the size, of course. Straight out of the box, our ADCC engine will not fit. In order to ensure that it does fit, we will be replacing stock exhaust with our stage one header pipe. We'll be replacing our stock gas tank with our spun aluminum little rascal gas tank. And we'll be replacing the stock air box with our stage one air filter. So when it comes to disassembling our 80cc engine, I'm gonna start by removing the muffler. In order to do that, you're gonna use two 13 millimeter sockets to remove these bolts. Once the muffler's removed, go ahead and give it a spin. You'll proceed to remove the stock air box by removing the two plastic holders on the side. Once those are removed, you'll be able to remove the air filter, the air box cover and the sponge. Underneath, you'll see there are two 10 millimeter bolts. Once those are removed, you'll be able to remove the air box completely. To remove the two 10 millimeter bolts holding on the initial air box, you remove the grid on the inside. I'm gonna be using a 10 millimeter ratchet or impact to remove the bolts. Remove the remaining air box piece. Set to the side. Ensure that your gasket remains on your carburetor because it is a brand new motor. So you're gonna wanna reuse that gasket. In order to remove your gas tank, you'll see located, it's gonna be one, two, and three eight millimeter bolts. Once all the remaining tank bolts are removed, you can go ahead and proceed by removing your fuel line from your car. You might have to kind of wiggle it, persuade it a little bit. Once it started to slide up, it should slide right off. Once the fuel line is removed, you see a plastic fuel line Hold it there. I like to leave it there and just remove the fuel line from the holder. Once the fuel line is removed, you can lift your tank and your fuel line will still be grass in a steel fuel line holder. All right, now that we got that out the way, um, we can start by assembling our 80cc engine with our stage one kit. I'm going to start by assembling the air filter. I'm doing that first. Simply slide it over your studs that was holding your stock air box in place. Once there, you'll use your stock air box nuts. Just finger tight. When I get these finger tight, I like to take a 10 millimeter impact and just give it a quick pop. Once 
Once you got your adapter installed, go ahead and open up your air filter. It's a chance you may have to loosen your air filter clamp in order to slide it over. Some may come loose enough. And this one is, so we can just go ahead and slide it onto the adapter. Once the air filter is placed onto the adapter, use a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket to tighten the, the clamp. Then we can proceed to installing our stage one header pipe. And your stage one header pipe will come with gasket and necessary bolts and lock washers in order to install. So before discarding your factory exhaust, what you're gonna do is reuse your factory exhaust gasket. To safely get it off the proper way, take a razor blade and slowly peel it off. And it should pop right off. Then go ahead and set your factory exhaust to the side. Reinstall your factory exhaust gasket. Once the factory exhaust gasket is installed, go ahead and take your stage one header pipe, slide it over the studs. You'll use one lock washer per stud, just to ensure that the bolts don't vibrate and back off. Install your nuts. For the nut underneath the header pipe, it's gonna require a 13 millimeter wrench in order to tighten. And there we have it. Our stage one kit is installed successfully on an 80cc engine. All right, so now that we got our stage one kit installed on our 80, we can go ahead and proceed by installing our 80cc engine onto our little rascal. Start by placing our engine onto the engine tray. Just like so. And you should easily be able to look down and just line up the engine mount bolts engine mount holes in the plate. When installing your engine mount hardware, you'll use one washer and one bolt on the top side of your engine. Um, now that I got the engine mounted, I like to leave the bolts finger tight so that I'm still able to move the engine back and forth. That helps a lot with alignment and chain play when installing your chain onto your bike. Now that we got our engine mounted and finger tightly installed, we can go ahead and proceed by installing our chain roller. You'll find located in your hardware pack, you have one chain roller, both bearings installed, and chain roller hardware. Chain roller hardware consists of a 15, uh, 13 millimeter bolt, two lock washers, one washer, one lock nut. To install your tensioner wheel, you start with one bolt, one washer, slide it through the tensioner mount, one lock washer, slide it onto the bolt, then the wheel itself, slide it onto the bolt. The second lock washer. Last but not least, 13 millimeter locking nut. Now use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the nut and a 13 millimeter impact to tighten.
Next, we'll get our clutch installed and work on chain alignment. Next, we can proceed by installing our Max Torque clutch. This one in particular is a 10-2 with a number 420 chain. To start by installing your clutch, you will move the bolt that's installed inside of your crank. I'm gonna use a 11 millimeter impact to remove. Just place it to the side. Remember when installing your clutch, to always install for the little rascal kit, you'll always install with your gear inboard, meaning your gear will be facing your motor. Just simply slide onto the shaft. And you'll be using the key and Allen set screw that's included with your Mac torque clutch. Slide in your key, install your set screw. And when installing your set screws, be using a number two Allen key. And so once you got your set screws, just finger tight. Go ahead and take your crankshaft bolt. And this will hold your clutch onto the crankshaft initially. And this is a factory crankshaft bolt that we removed before installing the clutch. Give it a couple pops. All right, now that we got our clutch installed on our 80, go ahead and proceed by installing our chain. I like to go up underneath the bike, over the roller, underneath the rear sprocket, back over the top of the rear sprocket, rest right there. From there, I'll go beneath the clutch, back over the clutch, and join the two ends. And kind of make it easier if you put where you're gonna join the two chains in the center of the bike, just to give you a little bit more room. Go ahead and install our master key. Our master's lock, uh, master link, sorry. So. Let's be second. And then you clip. With your clip, put it through the center of the link. Line it up with the forks on the clip. From there, take pliers, excuse me, and just snap the clip back on. Like so. And it's normal to have slack once you first install your chain. That's the whole point of us leaving our engine finger tight so that we can tighten the chain. Also, our tensioner is finger tight too, so we can adjust the tension there. That's pretty much it for installing the chain. Now that we got our engine installed and torqued down tightly, we got our clutch torqued down tightly, got our chain installed, our tent chain tensioner installed, and everything is torqued down to spec. We're gonna proceed by installing our seat. To do that, we first place the seat. Try to get it nice and even as possible. Once you got the seat placed, you'll go beneath the frame. You'll see three holes marked, one in the rear of the seat. You're gonna to wanna to mark that hole two in the front of the seat on the outside. You're gonna to wanna to mark those holes as well. Once you got your holes marked, go ahead and pull off your seat. You should see your spaces marked underneath. Once you got your holes marked, you'll use a 1164 drill bit to go ahead and drill your holes. Once 
you got your hose drill, go ahead and place it back top of your little rascal. Line your hose up. Proceed by installing three wood screws that we seen. Get the bolt started by hand. Remember not to over tighten these because they are going down in wood, not metal. Alright, All right, next we're going to be installing our hydraulic brake kit that is included in our little rascal kit. Um, what's included as far as brakes is your hydraulic brake system, that's your caliper, and the actual handle itself, two 13 millimeter bolts, and two half inch spacers. When installing them, what you're gonna do is go ahead and take both brake pads, line them up with the brake disc, slide them down, just kinda let them rest there. You'll take one of your half inch spacers, Place in between the bike and the caliper bracket itself. Go ahead and just get your first 13 millimeter bolt started by hand. You don't have you want don't want to tighten all the way yet. From there, it's okay to go ahead and lift the caliper up. Slide your caliper back down and make sure to keep your spacer in between the bracket on the bike and the actual bracket on the caliper. Once in place, go ahead and feed your screw, your bolt through, just finger tight. Then I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter impact to tighten. From there, I'm gonna be running my hydraulic brake fluid line that's on the left side. You want you can just go ahead and take your brake handle and these are held on by two eight millimeter sockets i'm going to be using an eight millimeter impact to tighten and remember to kind of try to balance these with tightening once both caliper and brake handle are installed it's okay to go ahead and take a zip a couple zip ties I like the zip tie on top of my frame. And that pretty sums it up for your little rascal hydraulic brake kit. Go ahead and give your bars a couple turns, make sure everything moves free, no kinks, no tension. Give your brake a pump, make sure it's nice and tight. I'm looking good. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and proceed to installing our throttle and our uh, grips on our little rascal. By doing that, we'll go ahead and start by disassembling the throttle housing. Once we get those two pieces removed, I like to leave the bolts into the top portion of the throttle housing. Kind of set it aside. From there, you'll take the barrel end of your throttle cable, feed the barrel end, through the cable hole of the bottom portion of your throttle housing so it pops out like so. Go ahead and screw in the guide to your housing. It don't have to be screwed all the way, just a couple turns. Next, grab your actual twist throttle. Insert the barrel into the throttle hole, the barrel hole on your throttle. Then feed it through the groove. Go ahead and set your throttle down into the housing. Next, you'll take the little plastic guide, slide him back down. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure that the guide, the cable goes in between the grooves of the guide. Slide him down in there. Make sure the grip's down in there. Take the top portion of your housing. 
see those screws still sitting in there. Don't want to tighten it all the way because we're going to take this housing and slide it over our handlebar. Just like so. Just like so. Now, once placing your twist throttle on, go all the way till it stops you. Then I like to bag it off about maybe a quarter of an inch. Reason being, you don't want the end of your throttle pressing up against your handlebar because that'll create drag when your throttle needs to release. Once set, go ahead and finish up by tightening it down. Back and forth. It was nice and snug. All right, now that we got our throttle installed onto our handlebars, we're gonna go ahead and install the other end of our throttle cable onto our engine. Once in the cable housing, we need a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the bolt in which holds the cable. Now, I'm able to grab it with my fingers and pull it nice and tight. If not, you may want to grab a pair of needle nose pliers to pull this cable nice and tight and hold it tight as you tighten this Phillips head screw. And what that does is eliminate slack in your throttle. Once your Phillips head screws nice and tight, a lot of people don't know, but the throttles, when once you buy these motors brand new, the throttle is bolted tight, so you're not able to throttle. You can fix that by loosening this bolt here with a 10 millimeter wrench. You don't want to remove it, you just want to break it loose so that your throttle frees up. And you'll kind of see your throttle move once that boot bolts loose. And give it a feel. You want it kind of wobbly, nice and free. Check and make sure you can open your throttle and that it returns under its own power. Open, returns. That's pretty much it for assembling your throttle cable. All right, y'all, we're um, about to proceed to go ahead and install our gas tank on our little rascal. Before doing that, what you want to do is install your pit cock onto your gas tank. You want to screw until tight. And it'll get tighter and tighter and tighter. What that is is those three, it's sealing so that you don't have any fuel leaks. And you may not be able to feed all the threads into the tank. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to installing our gas tank on our little rascal. It's gonna be a top fit. It's gonna set just like that. But first, we're gonna have to mount our tank bracket. What they do is sit there, like so. And you use the two included um, 13 millimeter bolts and 13 millimeter lock nuts. Okay, next I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the nut still on the bottom. And I'll be using the 13 millimeter impact to tighten. But now, go ahead and place your tank down onto your mountain brackets. Should sit nice and flush. You're gonna want your pit cock facing to the right side of the bike, just so that you can get access to turn it on and off, and it'll be clear of the two mountain bolts underneath. Once you got your tank in place, you'll take your two tank bands, go ahead and use a eight millimeter socket. Open your tank band. You can do these one at a time. This tank band is open. You'll go underneath both the tank and your tank brackets. And go ahead and get your tank band back started. Um, I like to leave these kind of loose until both of them are both in place. Just in case you gotta do any wiggling. Same thing with your second band. Open it up completely. Underneath both tank bracket, 
Before all the way tighten, I like to make sure that my tank is nice and straight. I don't want it leaning over, looking sloppy. Sitting up nice and straight. Go ahead, tighten both bands. And that's it for installing your gas tank. Next, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to installing the fuel line from the gas tank. Getting closer and closer to add fuel and oil, boys. Super. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to installing our fuel line on our Rascal 80. By doing that, I am gonna start by taking my fuel line hose. I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through there, head it towards my gas tank. Once through the fuel line holder, I'm gonna go under throttle mechanism and up to my gas tank pet cock. Um, you want it to be a snug fit, ensure that it isn't any leaks. All right. Now that you got your fuel line installed on your pit cock, from there, take a quick eyeball measurement of how long I need my hose. Come on out. I went back to my factory gas tank and fuel line and used one of the factory fuel line clamps. Slide my fuel line clamp onto my hose. Once that clamp's on that hose, take my fuel line clamp Place it down below the bow on my feet where it kind of bores out. Give it a pull up. And that kind of ensures that it's snug. And there we have it. Fuel line installed. All right, y'all, so next, we're gonna proceed to install our kill switch for our little Rascal 80. Doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the Phillips head screw out the back that's holding the bracket on. From there, take the bracket, I'm gonna go in between my handlebar and my master cylinder. Like so. All right, now that we got that, slid onto our handlebar. Go ahead and take your Phillips head screw. Place it back into the back of the bracket. You should have just enough room to get your screwdriver back there. Before all the way tight, you should get the top one nice and snug. Move back to your desired position. Go ahead and finish snugging it up. And there we are. So next we're gonna go ahead and proceed to install our ground on our kill switch. By doing that, we'll remove the one eight millimeter ground bolt that also holds the fan shroud on. Remove that bolt, make sure that everything stays in place on the engine. Take our ground hoop that's on our kill switch, bolt through there. And install the bolt just as it was removed. including the ground hoop from the uh, kill switch. Okay, next, you'll have like a little band bracket here. Go ahead and remove those. You'll have your low oil sensor. Gonna go ahead and remove that. And that plug is gonna be replaced plug on your kill switch and the kill switch plug is is it's a male end the switch on your engine is going to be a female end so there's only one way to plug them before I zip tie anything secure give my handlebars a quick turn make sure everything is nice and free so it seems like I need a little bit more slack Slack it up some, make sure everything's nice and free. That looks good. Wise man told me, wire management is key. <laughs> and there we have it. Just about done wrapping up our little Rascal 80 here. Got to looking at it and was wondering, well, I go to a lot of tracks. And if y'all are like anything like me, 
y'all headed to the racetrack with this thing. Well, a lot of racetracks want you to actually have your chain covered. So we were thinking we might as well go ahead and add this Go Power Sports chain guard while we at it, just to make sure we pass our track regulation. And not to mention it look good, look real good. We'll start by finger tight, finger starting them into the side of the engine. And a lot of times these are installed while installing your clutch and your chain and all that. And we'll go ahead and take our Go Power Sports chain guard and we'll be using those two slots for the little rascal. Place them in between your lock washer and the engine itself. Proceed by using the 13 millimeter box open wrench to tighten those bad boys down. Well, here we have it, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed. Learned a lot from our uh, Little Rascal 80 build here. Hope you guys stay tuned and look forward. We got plenty more to come in, like our Little Rascal 212 build. Pretty sure you guys gonna get a really, really, really big kick out of that. Y'all stay tuned, subscribe, hit that notification button.